My name is John Linehan, and I lead up the commercial services organization at Esri. Uh, just kind of blown away by the, the speakers and everyone that's taken the stage this morning. And, you know, I have some big shoes to fill, but hope, hopefully I'll do it justice. In leading the services organization, I'm in a really kind of special position in that I get to see a lot of the work that you're all doing and what you're doing in terms of introducing and leveraging location intelligence across your business. Uh, Mike spoke earlier about accelerating growth. And Jack spoke yesterday about the intelligent nervous system and the coming geospatial revolution. As you can imagine, I'm not your typical revolutionary, but I'm really excited about that idea, and I'm really excited to talk to you about how you can build leading businesses on the geospatial cloud. So all businesses, you know, kind of operate similar, similarly, and they want to kind of accomplish some things. You know, your businesses want to, you know, operate smarter, be more efficient, make decisions more quickly and more effectively. Within your organizations, what, what we understand is there's a growing you know, tide. Spatial awareness is increasing and the demand for location intelligence is growing, driving you know, your competitive advantage. I wanna share some compelling stories over the next 15 or 20 minutes about things your peers are doing in terms of leveraging location intelligence and building their businesses on the geospatial cloud. So in the plenary yesterday, Jack spoke of, you know, our world needing, or, or pardon me, our world kind of being a living organism. What I'd like to challenge you to think about is your business as a living organism. You know, your business needing a nervous system. When your manager takes a step back or your, your executive team, they look at parts of your business. Um, but ultimately what they're doing is they're taking a step back and looking at the whole of your organization, how you're operating across all of your business units, your functional units and making sure that there's synergy, there's communication, there's collaboration, and there's ultimately results. When, when a retailer is looking at store performance in a specific geography across channels, that informs their supply chain decisions. When a high tech company installs and implements a data center, they're gonna instrument that data center so that they can understand performance and they can schedule predictive maintenance. And an insurer will look at long-term climate models to inform new policy decisions and where they're going to write new business. It's, it's a case of the left hand of the business knowing what the right hand of the business is doing so that they're operating in synergy. How you understand your business is evolving. And for that matter, your business is evolving, customers, products, distribution. We heard a lot about that this morning, and I think you, you all know that inherently by you know, kind of the work you do every day. So your work, those of you in this room, the reason you're here is because you're already on this journey. Your work is already creating this geospatial infrastructure or this business nervous system for your organizations. It powers understanding in real time. We heard about that all morning, the need to be able to move at the speed of business. You're incorporating data from all your different business uh, units, all your different mission areas, and looking at them across your organization. And then you're making intelligent and responsive decisions. You're acting upon that information. This is a chance for you to optimize your business using location intelligence and using an enterprise view of a geospatial platform. What I want to share now is, you know, in discussions and, and through the experiences we've had with you, these are your stories and this is a summary of what we've seen in, um, in, in the market, a journey that most businesses go through. 
with respect to applying and leveraging geospatial um, technology in their organization. In almost all cases, especially in, in business rather than government or other areas, it starts with a departmental implementation. It's focused on a very discrete need. It solves one business problem. In many cases, there's organic growth out of that organization. It's driven by an analyst, a champion, who evolves into an evangelist in many cases. This organic growth leads to new technical capabilities being shared with other parts of the organization. Um, in cases that could be maps or analytics or information products, but now we're seeing more and more, it's simple serve uh, applications. The next stage we see, or the next step we often see, is an evolution to a second larger implementation for another mission area or another business unit. This may come six months after you first use, you know, use the technology to solve one business problem. It might come eight years later. Um, there's no prescribed timeline, but what we are seeing is that timeline and that pace is quickening. The key to this second large implementation is we almost see it as a trigger where the organization takes a step back and really starts to appreciate the potential for cross-organizational growth. There's significant groundswell. I think it's a combination of the technology, the industry, and, and just the, the market pressures, but also the internal um, buy-in to uh, the, the location intelligence, which creates this groundswell of interest across the organization, across business units. And what we see here is it's no longer a single champion, but it's multiple champions across different parts of the organization, creating a community. There may not be a formality to it, but they're working together and they're all kind of marching towards that, that vision. And what this really leads to is the organization recognizing that there's a need for a strategy. There's a desire for a strategy. It's driven by market demands, trying to be more efficient, trying to be responsive, um, but it's also recognizing you know, efficiencies, infrastructure, et cetera. In this journey, there's a lot of different deployment options with the technology. This might start with a desktop-based approach, navigate or gravitate towards an online software as a service, but ultimately the, the enterprise vision really in many cases leads to an on-premises deployment where it's taking the best of both worlds, security, et cetera. It's almost always aligned with other business initiatives you have going on. Pretending like this is operating in, in isolation is, is just not the reality. These are integrated systems with all of your business systems. And in, in reality, this journey is, we talked about the business nervous system. This journey is how you build those connections across your business nervous system. All businesses' number one priority is to grow and growth. And you, you kind of accomplish that in a few ways. One is you identify new markets and you capture those new markets and you, you grow new opportunities. The second is you manage the risk to your existing business. That risk could be physical risk to property, people, um, VIPs, or it could be market risk when you consider insurance or, or real estate, you have a portfolio. And then lastly, you have to deliver on the commitment to the customer. You have to deliver the products and services. And then all of this, there's an underpinning of technology. Applying technology, to drive new value to the organization and identify new opportunities for growth. All of these require dynamically integrating data across business units, across mission areas. You need to analyze and transform that information or data into information and, and intelligence. And then you need to act upon it and respond to the market demands. You see, you see the kind of here tying it back to that idea of the, the nervous system. This visual is trying to depict kind of a, a traditional mission-based or functional-based implementation at an organization. You have market development, a very familiar pattern to a lot of you, focus on you know, identifying you know, new stores or new locations, new areas to grow in, into in terms of your market. Risk management, digital supply network, and the advanced analytics team. In all these cases, these units, these business teams have 
essential data that supports their specific function. But with the impact of digital transformation, this is requiring all of you, as Mariana and Jeff spoke of earlier, it's requiring us to go through an organizational and a, and a structural mind shift. You know, we need to imagine a different future. We need to build the connected nervous system for your business. And this works in unison on the geospatial cloud. I think that's why you're here. I believe that's why you're here. You guys are excited about this and, and you're kind of bought into this vision. But this idea provides kind of a centralization of, of the underlying technology infrastructure, the data, it shares this across the organization and it provides the same context to everyone in your business. It helps you manage complexity, complexity of data, speed, technology. It doesn't put that on each individual organization. And ultimately, it fosters rapid, more, more timely decisions, which leads to value. A value from an efficiency standpoint, better decisions, and, and new opportunity. So what I wanna share here is three company journeys that go through this trajectory. I've, I've protected the, the innocent by kind of, you know, uh, obfuscating some of the names and the details, but really that's not the important part. It's really about kind of seeing your own journey in, in this organization's uh, journey. So the first example is a manufacturing company. Five to eight years ago, really had a discrete business challenge that they needed to address. And in order to do so, they purchased and implemented a dealer market management system, which provided tools for dealer management and also territory analysis, largely leveraging their market layers, their customer layers, and their territory layers. Because they didn't have internal buy-in, this organization actually outsourced the IT infrastructure they had a hosted system. But as we discussed in the common journey, that led to organic growth across the organization. They were providing and being asked to provide map products, targeted analytics to other parts of the organization. And they began providing self-service apps. I imagine a lot of you are at this stage of your journey now. But what we saw with them is the next step and a critical step was identifying a need in their risk management team, their supply chain team, to manage the risk to their business, to manage the risk to their production capabilities. They introduced supply layers, supply network layers on top of what they already had. And then they also built some purpose-driven apps, a supply chain viewer, a supplier tracing application. And then they also brought in network analysis, monitoring and alerting. And what you're gonna see in, in these, this series of slides is this represents kind of a turning point or a tipping point for these organizations. Once you get to this scale where you have two large parts of your business running on a very similar or the exact same technology, there's, there's interest in starting to build this out as a, as a core capability across your organization. In this case, the next organization or the next team that came on board was the marketing team very closely aligned with the dealer management team. And then evolving into the advanced analytics business. So you have them now looking at how do I instrument and track vehicles? How do I enable this geospatial technology in my connected vehicles? And then how do I leverage this massive data that we're collecting um, with respect to our business? This was an example, again, of where it started with a champion. That champion built up internal support and then promoted it, acted as an evangelist until it got enough support as an as a, uh, enterprise system. And now this has been taken over by their IT organization. The next example I wanna share is an insurer's journey. Different use case, different focus, but again, you're gonna see a similar journey. In this case, exposure management is pretty much key to the business of property and casualty insurance. 
They managed the aggregate risk of their portfolio and their policies. Again, a second large implementation where they're looking now at their underwriting business, another key component to the, the business of insurance. Here, they began to incorporate third-party risk modeling. And they've had, they, they built out some very specific applications that supported this business unit. You have hazard analysis, field inspection, some of the things that the underwriting teams were responsible for. Again, a tipping point where this really required this organization to now look at an enterprise strategy, geospatially enabling the organization, connecting the different parts of the business nervous system. Taking the opportunity now to quickly turn on their claims management department. There's a lot of overlap between the responsibilities of the underwriting and the claim management team in terms of the field assessment, um, image exploitation, live impact analysis. This allowed them to move more quickly into some of these advanced areas. And then as things evolved, they kept asking, what more could we do? They engaged their advanced analytics team and they weren't happy enough with you know, sticking with image uh, exploitation, but they wanted to move into the machine learning, the GOAI space in terms of doing automated Im image detection. You saw a little bit of this yesterday with the story from USAA on the plenary. Fraud analytics, scenario modeling, this desire for a strategy, this recognition of a, of a business strategy. Now setting the stage for them to turn on their corporate security team, to turn on their customer engagement team. And then the last journey I want to tell is a retailer's journey. Again, a lot of retailers here. And retail, you know, often begins almost solely in the market mapping space, understanding where to put locations, what opportunities exist. And a lot of opportunity here and what we've seen with this organization is, again, that organic growth. The real estate team often becomes the de facto spatial team supporting their organization when they don't have anything else. Targeted analytics products to other parts of the organization acting as a champion, a evangelist. And much like some of the earlier stories, this second implementation really creates that trigger point where there's a realization and a recognition that there's opportunity to, to centralize, there's an opportunity to, to, to integrate a geospatial system for the organization and the benefits that brings. And it sets the stage for increased usage, advanced usage in, in this case. The third, the third kind of leg of the stool in this scenario is the advanced analytics team. And interesting here, we, we heard a lot of, from retailers this morning, and then also James, you know, looking at omnichannel, looking at the customer journey, better understanding the customer, human movement, sales forecasting. And what can your advanced analytics, some of your data science teams, bring to the table to help really kind of bring that to a whole other level? And then lastly, in this scenario, looking at how does the supply network leverage this new geospatial infrastructure. Growing towards a strategy, looking at sustainability, looking at facility management operations, the whole, you know, whole host of the, the business areas. So three company journeys that I hope resonate and I hope each of you can look at those and kind of see yourselves in them to some degree. Um, but what they, all, what they all represent, similar timelines, pardon me, different timelines, similar personas, analysts, champions, evangelists, um, ultimately the same end goal. You know, they all were getting to this point of having this vision of how better to leverage this technology across their organization. So what we've learned in, in what you've taught us actually is that as you go through this journey, your experiences have taught us, you know, there's some common steps along the way. You first need to understand where you're trying to go. What is your vision? 
What's your organization's vision, KPIs? Understand your existing capacity, capability. And based on that input, you need to plan how you will best align technology to help you realize that vision. How are you going to get there? And then lastly, you need to act. You need a, you need a sequence set of activities, a roadmap, so to speak, which allows you to deliver on your vision, your plan to realize that vision using a set of resources, what you can invest from a, from a team perspective and things you're going to do in response to um, your plan. But what's really important here and the takeaway is this is a, a business first approach to getting the most out of geography within your organization. This is not a technology based focus. Technology is an enabler. You really need to have the business strategy and then leverage the technology. The other thing we learned from these journeys and by working with you is that all of you recognize the need to organize yourselves differently when you're on this journey. It's based on some core pillars. It's based on a common operating model. How do you make decisions? How do you prioritize business areas? How do you prioritize what next? It's based on a unified technical architecture. You want to simplify the architecture discussion. And that unified technical architecture allows you to rapidly prototype and innovate, like we talked about earlier. It's critical to operate at that speed, that speed of business. It allows you to innovate, deliver more, deliver more capability more quickly, and make decisions. So this is a big topic, right? The geospatial revolution is just beginning. Um, the geospatial nervous system that emerges, the business nervous system, will profoundly transform your business. What I'd like to kind of challenge all of you to do is to reach out across your organizations and connect the different functional areas into your business nervous system, the business nervous system that you're positioned, best positioned to build and deliver for your organizations. So with that, I'm confident that will, it can and will bring transformational capability to your organization. Thank you.